morning, everyone, and happy Sunday. Happy second day of Easter. God is risen today. We welcome you to uh, Old Audubon service. Uh, prayerfully, uh, we are here together. We are worshiping together. And soon and very soon, as the old folks say, we will be worshiping in person. We don't have a date yet, but it is coming so soon. So hopefully the anticipation for you are, is building because it definitely is building for me. Today, we want you to be present and participate. Recognize that God is here. And because God is here, you bring the presence of the Lord with you. So lay aside all the weights and stuff that it took you to get here. Wait, lay aside all of the preparation and be present with us together in the presence of the Lord. Amen. Let us pray. Lord God, we thank you for this wonderful day that you have made. We do rejoice and are glad and excited in it. We thank you for our friends and our family that we were allowed to worship together last week in our Resurrection Sunday. But now God, help us li live into this resurrection life that we have. Help us to remember that you are present with us, around us, and more importantly, in us. We thank you God for all these wonderful things for the ability to come boldly to your presence and your throne of grace. And we thank you for all the families that are present and those who wanted to be present and for all of those people who are virtu uh, worshiping virtually and in person this, this Holy Sunday. We thank you for all these wonderful things. In the precious name of your son, Jesus, amen and amen. There's a sweet, sweet spirit in this place. And I know that it's the spirit of the Lord. There are sweet expressions on each face. And I know that it's the presence of the Lord. Sweet Holy Spirit, sweet heavenly dove, stay right here with us, filling us with your love. And for these blessings, we lift our hearts in praise. Without a doubt, we know that we have been revived when we shall leave this place. Let us greet one another with these words. May the peace of Christ be with you. Thomas said, unless I see the mark of the nails and put my hand in his side, I will not believe. We are often skeptical of people driven by our senses, relying on that which we can hear, see or prove. Our Lord asks us to see the invisible, to trust in the spirit, to have faith. Lord, give us faith. Sometimes we get carried away by our emotions, by wishful thinking, and by popular trends that pull us in. Lord, help us to hold in our beliefs, but also careful as Thomas was. Move us beyond mere trust in ordinary things and open our eyes for spiritual realities. Jesus said, blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Amen. And please join me in your homes for our opening hymn, which will be 308, Thine Be the Glory, 308.
thine be the glory. Let us pray together. How very good and present it is, Lord God, to be drawn together by you as brothers and sisters in Christ in this resurrection season. Pour your empowering spirit upon us that the Easter message we here proclaim may become more than words on a page. Help us this hour to, to listen for and lean toward your voice, which speaks beyond the words we utter. Move us past our doubts that we might step forward with the faith that does not end when we leave this place. Nudge us to touch areas of our lives that need to be touched so that we might then recognize that no door is so heavy that you can, that you can be locked out. This we pray in the name of the one for whom you rolled away the soul. Amen. And our prayer response today will be found in the faith we sing, number 2211, Faith, Patience in the Night, 2211. Today's Old Testament reading is Psalm 133. How wonderful and pleasant it is when brothers live together in harmony, for harmony is as precious as the anointing oil that was poured over Aaron's head that ran down his beard and onto the border of his robe. Harmony is as refreshing as the dew from Mount Hermon that falls on the mountains of Zion. And there the Lord has pronounced his blessing, even life everlasting. Today's New Testament lesson comes from John 20, verses 19 to 31. That Sunday evening, the disciples were meeting behind locked doors because they were afraid of the Jewish leaders. Suddenly, Jesus was standing there among them. Peace be with you, he said. As he spoke, he showed them the wounds in his hands and in his side. They were filled with joy when they saw the Lord. Again, he said, peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I am sending you. Then he breathed on them and said, receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive anyone's sins, they are forgiven. If you do not forgive them, they are not forgiven. One of the 12 disciples, Thomas, nicknamed the twin, was not with the others when Jesus came. They told him, we have seen the Lord. 
but he replied, I won't believe it unless I see the nail wounds in his hands, put my fingers into them and place my hand into the wounds in his side. Eight days later, the disciples were together again, and this time Thomas was with them. The doors were locked, but suddenly, as before, Jesus was standing among them. Peace be with you, he said. Then he said to Thomas, put your fingers here and look at my hands. Put your hand into the wound in my side. Don't be faithless any longer. Believe. My Lord and my God, Thomas exclaimed. Then Jesus told him, you believe because you have seen me. Blessed are those who believe without seeing me. The disciples saw Jesus do many other miraculous signs in addition to the ones recorded in this book. But these are written so that you may continue to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that by believing in him, you will one day have life by the power of his name. This is the word of God to the people of God. Thanks be to Thanks God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Lord God, today, it is especially important that we hear you and recognize your presence. Because God, this is the beginning of a new day and a new year. And we need to follow you and follow your directions. So God, as you breathe on us and in us, your Holy Spirit, help us to receive your gift, the third person of the Trinity in our lives, that we may walk and be in the power as you have given us, the power over demons, the power over temptations, the power over issues in our lives that we may say we are here and ready to do your word and your will. We thank you, God, that you gave us your son, Jesus. And because of his wonderful, matchless gift, we too are free. We thank you for all of these wonderful things in the precious name of your son, Jesus, amen and amen. Jesus is alive. He has risen as he said. Last week, we celebrated the risen savior. We celebrate the fact that we don't have to weep any longer. But now we have to live into this new present reality that Jesus has risen and is alive forevermore. We'll continue to follow John's narrative. And we see that the very same morning that Jesus uh, showed himself to Mary Magdalene, that that was not the end of that day. The disciples who had come with Mary saw that the tomb was empty. So they ran and told the others. But what did they do? They locked themselves in a room for fear of the Jews. So though the fact that Jesus had risen was a reality to some, fear was also a reality. But that evening, that same evening, Jesus shows up to the disciples. And the first thing he says to them is, peace be unto you. When Jesus says peace, peace came with them. And they were overjoyed. They were ecstatic that Jesus is now here. Jesus told them, put your hands in my hands, put your hands in my side, know that I am alive. Now, if 
it were not so miraculous that Jesus was crucified and then dead and then alive again, he shows up with them. That for me in our modern day world would have been enough to, to make me afraid, except that what his words are is peace. And so now I'm excited for him to be here. But then Jesus had a reason to show up. He did something extraordinary as if everything he'd already done was not extraordinary. He breathed on them and he said, receive the Holy Spirit. Then the third thing he did was give them a purpose. He said, whatever you forgive on earth will be forgiven and what you do not forgive will not be forgiven. This is extraordinary. These two things had not been, those three things had not been done before. First, that Jesus breathed on them and said, receive the Holy Spirit. Now, we as Trinitar Trinitarians believe that there is God in three persons. God, the Father, God, the Son, and God, the Holy Spirit, all God, three in one. We call God the Father, but we recognize that God is not gendered. So God is not male or female, God is a spirit. But we can call God Father, Creator. We can call God Alpha and Omega. We can call God the beginning and the end. We can call God the first person of the father. Some people even call God mother, but God is not gendered. God is a spirit. We can even call God lover, the lover of our souls. When we speak of the son, S-O-N, we think of Jesus, but we also think of the one who is both human and divine. The one who came down on earth for us to show us how to live. You can, you can call Jesus beloved and redeemer. You can call him friend, but we know the second person of the Trinity as Jesus. But the third person of the Trinity, we think of as the Holy Spirit. In um, ancient times, we call him, call the third person Sophia, which means wisdom. It is God, the sustainer. God as the lover, God as the mover, God as the one who is at all times, in all places, and everywhere. However, we call God, they are all three in one. Now, it is a mystery, and it's probably, in fact, I know that it would take somebody much more intelligent than I to be able to explain it. But we know that God in three persons allows us to move in our lives as we are. What made what Jesus said extraordinary is that when Jesus breathed on his disciples, he said to them, in essence, receive inside yourself the third person of the Trinity, the Holy Spirit, receive God in you. We know that we are made of three parts in our body. We have body, we have soul, we have our spirit. Our bodies we know about. It's the part that we dress and wash every day. It's the part that feels the pain. It's the part that sometimes doesn't even feel like it because it aches. We know about our bodies. 
but our souls are much as much a part of our body. Our souls encompass our emotion. It encompasses our thinking. Our souls are what makes us have decisions, makes us empathetic. Our souls give us our personality, but our souls can sleep. Our souls can be elated or it can be depressed. Our souls are what carries us throughout life. But there's a third part of our bodies and it is our spirit. Our spirit never sleeps. Our spirit animates us. It's what makes us alive, our spirits. Our spirits are what makes us closest to God. So when Jesus said, receive the Holy Spirit, he was not telling us receive the spirit that's in us already. What he was calling and telling us is receive the presence of God in our lives. Now, when we know that our, our spirits are alive and our souls are alive, we realize that something has taken place in our bodies. It is amazing that what Jesus said to us was to receive something other than ourselves. The word that we know as spirit is pneuma, which is wind. So basically what Jesus is saying is wind of the Holy Spirit come into my disciples. Charismatics and Pentecostals often call it being filled with the spirit. But the thought is the same. Having the third person, God, being inside of me and being inside of you. We know that the disciples not only listened and heard, but they did what Jesus says. Because this ragtag group of people spread the good news throughout the entire world. They changed the entire world. However, even though Jesus told them, receive the third person of the Trinity in them, it was not enough initially to change their lives. How do we know? Because they were still locked in a room even eight days later. You see, when Jesus was there at the very first time, Thomas wasn't. Thomas wasn't there. Thomas called the twin. And when the other disciples said, we have seen the Lord, Thomas said, like most of us, I ain't going to believe it. <laughs> I'm just not going to believe it till I see it with my own eyes. But Jesus heard Thomas. And Jesus showed up eight days later, still locked in that same room, still afraid. But Jesus shows, says again, peace be on to you. You see, many of us are like Thomas. We, we can't believe it till we see it. We don't believe the miracles that are already in our entire lives until it actually happens to us. We can't experience the grace and mercy and joy and miracles because it happened to somebody else and we have a tendency to be skeptical. Yet God does always show up. So often today, we live in blessed blindness. We go about our everyday lives with a rhythm. We're looking for that rhythm. We get up in the same time of day. We eat the same food. We know where our, our friends are, our clothes are. And if you don't know or haven't learned anything for this pandemic, is that normal? It is not normal. We were not meant to be so dulled 
that we go around with life not seeing or believing anything unless we have experienced it. Every now and then, sometimes we'll get fired up on a cause. We'll, something will say, oh my God, the, the Louisiana, there's been hurricanes and we get excited about it and we give money. But 30 days later, we've forgotten about it again and we get into that same rhythm of our lives. It's usually just for a season when something wakens us up. We, however, were tripartite or three-part beings. We are created to use all of our five senses and some say even six or more. We were created to see, touch, taste, feel, and smell. We're created to work all of this together so that we are present in today. We're given those senses so that we can make good decisions and have good sensory input, but use our heads and our minds to be able to mush all of this together and filter it through the spirit that is in our lives. Now, our spirit is actually light, but it can be darkened. It can be darkened by trauma. It can be darkened by circumstances. It can be darkened by grief. It can be dark by darkness that is around us, but it was created to be light and it is created to be with God. So when Jesus said, receive the Holy Spirit, what he's saying is receive in your life, light and life eternal. We are meant to be light givers and life bearers. We are meant to be connected to the divine. That's why we so long every day to look for our meaning, to look for our purpose in life. We keep seeking for those things that God has created us to be, our destiny, our why. We have a God-sized hole in our lives that can be only filled with God. So when Jesus came to his disciples, the very first thing he did was connect us to God. He called God the Father all the time. But he told his disciples, teach him, teach us to be connected just like you are connected. And so we have the Lord's Prayer, but we have something even better when Jesus came. We have God ourselves in ourselves. Jesus pointed us back to the creator and filled us with himself and told us to go and do what we are created to do. Now, that thought of forgive sins or hold sins, recognize that concept is more forgive those things that are not like God forgive those things that pull us away from God. You see, the word sin is harmartia, which means missing the mark. So he's telling his disciples, show people how to not miss the mark. And if they don't want to receive it, I got it. Okay, let them have their sin. But your job is to point them to God, the creator. When we were children, we knew this. We had bigger thoughts and bigger dreams. We dreamed of being an astronaut or a deep sea diver or to scale the high mountains. We dream of big things in our lives, but then life happens. And when life happens, we start to have shorter and shorter and shorter hands. So we stop reaching up for those things as children that we know that we can do. After a while, we just tend to play it safe and we don't take any chances anymore. 
we long for that normalcy of thing again. Until the Holy Spirit comes in your lives, then we have to recognize that we do not have to be constrained anymore by what we can see. Our spirits can be list, lifted beyond the possibilities or boundaries of what we can see because what's inside of us is no longer my edges, it's God's edges. You see, Thomas re re represents most of our lives. We believe only what we can see. What Jesus does in blowing on us and telling us to receive the Holy Spirit is to expand who, you, who we are. I want all of us, all of us, to look into your life. Remember again the things that you thought about even as a child. Look at your hands and see the things that give you joy. Close your eyes for a moment. Close your eyes and dream again. Release the boundaries that you have put on your life. The wonderful thing about God, the wonderful thing about God is that God is here and present today, alive and in us, in us. You have a choice. You have a choice to receive the Holy Spirit in your life. You have a choice to be active and not just be living. You have a choice to be all that you can be, just like the, like the military said. But the choice is yours. Will you, will I, believe only what I can see? Or will I see what I believe? The choice is yours. We have the power. Oh, say, can you see? Amen. And please join me in our response, which we found to the faith we sing, number 2206, without seeing you, 2206.
Good morning, everyone. Can you hear me? Thank God. <laughs> Let me tell you a little story about how I got to Otterbein Church. In 1996, 25 years ago, I was on my way to Columbia from Towson, where I lived, and I was late to attend a service out in Columbia. I stopped my car at the light at Sharp and Conway, and I heard great music coming out of that church. I pulled right, parked, and went in. I sat in the back, of course, but it wasn't long before the wonderful Easter lilies and the hyacinths made me feel dizzy, and I crept out and almost fell down the front steps. Immediately, a young man was at my side offering concern, and was I okay? And I said, oh yeah, it's just allergies. But I was amazed that someone had noticed me and offered help. My second visit was in July or August of that year. And again, I was late heading for Columbia. When I looked to my right, I saw a sign on the side of the church, which read, come as you are. And I looked down and I thought, hmm, here's a real challenge because I was in blue jeans headed for a swim party. No one, even men went to church in blue jeans. So I parked, I went in to test if they meant what the sign said. I walked into the welcome part of the service and I was hugged, even kissed on the mouth by an older lady who was shorter than I. I stayed on and continue to this day. Why do I mention these two sort of small events? First, someone noticed me as a stranger and went way out of his way on a crowded service and, and offered concern. Secondly, it did not seem to matter at all to people in suits and ties and dresses how I was dressed. I was welcome. Hospitality was rampant and extended for an hour after church with great snacks in the Nelker building. Later, I would also notice that I was okay to be a divorced single woman. My experience to that bit point had been that preachers who were men were never happy to invite us into a congregation. Along the way, I was encouraged to grow spiritually and began my studies to become a certified lay speaker, now called servant, and participate and lead Lenten Bible studies. I found continuous examples of reaching out to help strangers and the community. Like young men at Helping Up Mission, teamwork of the old men in the yellow shirts who sold peanuts, and a social worker named Dante, who introduced us to a middle school in a poverty-ridden Brooklyn Curtis Bay area that was about to be torn down and which he, and a miracle-minded principal named Chris Battaglia turned into a community high school, the first ever in that area. The students were served not only education, but many University of Maryland social work interns helped with accountability of attendance, family well-being, opportunities like daycare for babies of teen parents, still the only one in city public schools, 
and counseling for college preparation and mental health. Because of area health problems like tons of asthma and cancers, an after-school discussion group called Free Your Voice became actively involved in environmental help. And the rest is history. Our church served as a community partner involved in variable activities. The last 10 years have seen such a positive impact for the community with the school as the hub and many committed community partners like Old Otterbein Church. I have a long list of accomplishments, but I can share them with you anytime you wanna sit down for an hour. But we do continue even in this pandemic year to fulfill the wishes for the annual Christmas shop. And boy, were they thankful. Now, our new project is called Neighbor to Neighbor. It is set to overcome the negative impact of COVID. Basically, every student needs to fill a state requirement of 75 volunteer hours a year to receive a Maryland diploma. We will provide places, times, and supervision for them accumulating those service hours. Then, especially in poverty-ridden areas, the need is awareness of their neighbors and pride in a clean, trash-free streets and yards. Super needed is being paid for that labor to mow yards, fix a broken fence, paint a door, help plant a flower garden, whatever it takes. And since not everyone is college bound, basic training in job skills is paramount with guidance and preparation for interviews and how to's that becomes a true gift for their lifetime. I'm inviting each of you to consider being a mentor, tutor, one day supervisor to help these young men and women to become our leaders for the future. It is a true mission that's never ending. This year, I think we all have found out that our 250 year old property and buildings are not where God is. He's in our hearts and our actions, wherever we are. Let each of us continue in all our missions as resurrection people. Today, I invite you, each and every one, for a time of celebration of Ben Franklin's past accomplishments and all those in the future. Come join me today. Music starts at three to Mothers on the Alley, which is located on the backside of Mother's Restaurant. The front is, is uh, Charles Street and the back is beside the city parking garage, runs between East Cross and West Street. Please wear masks, even though we are totally open to the outside. God bless. Call me with any questions. Amen, June. That is so wonderful. Um, June was one of those people who, when I first came to the church, also welcomed me along with other members. And so what she says, she is speaking her truth. And her truth is that she is truly a servant leader of God. And her passion is the Ben Franklin School. And everything that she, she's doing, she is focused on making sure 
that those students and even their children are yes. succeeding. Mm -hmm. And so that is a testament of how God lives in her and through her to others. And so I thank you so very much for this mission moment, June. And thank you for your inv invitation, y'all. What she didn't say was that was, this is an anniversary of her birthday. <laughs> yeah, it I'm always so is. I'm Irish for the day, so everything will be green. <laughs> and we'll be dancing. So that is Mothers in Sitting, the Alley. <laughs> mothers on the Alley. So we respond to God's word through our faithful giving. Um, as June has given, there are others who give e equally of themselves, not only their physical, but their financial. And we appreciate that. This has allowed us to continue to be in ministry and in uh, collaboration with other agencies. You may uh, give your offering online at the oldoutofvineumc.org donate. Um, the link is here and is also on our website. We appreciate all that you do. We know that God loves a cheerful giver and that God in your heart, this is how we respond to God's gifts. Amen. For our prayers and prayers concerns, we invite you to print that out every week and continue to pray for those who are on the prayer concerns. Um, there are more added every day. There are more that called uh, during the week um, for us to continue to pray. We don't wait till Sunday to pray, but we pray uh, on, without ceasing because God hears our prayer, our smallest prayer. So continue to pray for those in our uh, prayer list. Uh, we will continue as the um, announcement says, virtual worship service, but we are so co close that we can almost taste it. We're getting there and I want you to stay tuned to what we're going to be doing uh, in, this, in the near, near future. I know I've said this, but it is true that we are there and we are present. Um, and in fact, last week when we, uh, after service, we actually uh, gave communion and even to Hanover Square across the street and other uh, members. So we are definitely working on it and we are so close that we can almost taste it. But until that time, you can uh, continue to give at oldaudubine250.org to donate and continue to allow us to be in ministry together. Amen. We still do have noonday prayers. Um, it is the formal time that is the access numbers there, but recognize my number is here that you may feel free to call me at any time if something happens because things happen in the middle of the week. Please call me and we will pray together. And if it is something that I can get to, um, we will also uh, be together um, as we have found have been able to do uh, for people who had emergencies. So recognize that noonday prayer is Wednesday, but I am always available for you to pray. Amen. Our second quarter mission is the food bank. Um, they 
tirelessly support food insecure individuals. Um, they make sure they have enough nutritious food to meet the uh, need just for, not for today, but for any of the foreseeable future. Um, you can uh, find the link for the Maryland uh, Food Bank and have uh, help. There's a way to volunteer and to donate to them. Amen. If you are shopping on, oh, on Amazon, please designate on Amazon Smile. Um, it is Old Audubon Baltimore United Methodist Church. It costs you nothing. But every time, every time that you buy something from Audubon, uh, from Amazon, a portion goes to Old Audubon. And we appreciate your gift. Amen. Volunteers are needed to feed hungry people. Um, we hope to co coordinate a volunteer opportunities for the Maryland food banks and the movable feast. More details are coming as soon as we are, um, as we have them. So please email us at Old Audubon um, DMC, uh, I'm sorry, Old Audubon UMC2 at the Gmail account. And we will hook you up with volunteer opportunities. Um, if you would like to get vaccinated, um, I have had a great deal of success my, myself and Cindy with getting people at, uh, appointments. Recognize now that you are eligible all the way to age 16. Um, and so the um, uh, governor has opened it up to just about everyone. However, I have noticed this last week that there are those of you who say to me, pastor, I can't stand in the line. Because when you're uh, these mass vaccination sites, you actually have to stand in line. And sometimes it may be for an hour or more. But there are other places that you can get vaccinated. There are uh, pharmacies that you can get vaccinated. And there are private vaccination sites like the conferences. The conference is uh, sponsoring private vaccination sites. If you would like to be vaccinated, please email me. And if you also have my phone number, um, and we will coordinate and get you vaccinated. Amen. For next week, um, we have a, um, uh, yes, so Betty says that you can pre-register if you live in Baltimore City, and then they will contact you, and they will, and actually the county as well. Next week, um, we have a special, uh, uh, actually, preacher. We understand our own uh, Reverend Burkett is going to be there. Um, she is going to be preaching for the love of all things for next week. Um, and so look out for that. It is still part of our 250th anniversary celebration. Um, and the week after that, I need to announce to you um, in uh, April 24th is my daughter's uh, wedding, amen. So I will not be uh, here that weekend, uh, but Reverend Fisher has agreed to, um, to share the word for us. So please pray for myself and, um, and James as we go and celebrate my only daughter. I have two sons and I have, so I have three children, but I only have one daughter. Um, so I'm gonna be mommy in the next two weeks. So we've been excited for the last um, uh, actually several months getting ready for her wedding. So um, please pray um, during that time um, as the first week, um, Reverend Burkett will be, pray will be bringing the word next week. And the week after that, it'll be uh, Reverend Fisher. And that is the uh, neat lit. Uh, oh yes. And so Lois says she listened to the concert last Sunday and the concert is wonderful. Um, the, the link should still be there on our constant contact if you want to uh, hear the, the uh, concert again. And also I want to thank, I don't know if June wants to thank everyone for coming out uh, and helping with selling the parking uh, for uh, the O's game yesterday um, and again today. Uh, but we do uh, want to uh, affirm you and thank you for those who came out and helped to celebrate and
from what I understand, they sold out uh, on opening day, which is Thursday, and uh, last night on Saturday. So thank you for um, participating. And for those who want to uh, help in volunteers, you can also contact June as well. Am I, am I correct, June? Amen. And so now it's time for uh, share, sharing our joys and our concerns. Recognize that God hears the smallest whisper, even the things that we don't think God can hear. But God is of our faith that we may behold the work of your redemption. Open our minds and our hearts to receive you, Lord, your resurrection glory, your light everlasting. May this time of worship, reflection, and celebration be a worthy response to your love and your sacrifice for us. Together, we pray as you taught your disciples to pray and please unmute together. Our Father, Father. who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done, will be done, 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 done on earth, on earth, on earth as, it as it is in heaven. heaven. Give, give us, us this day our daily bread. bread. And forgive, and forgive us, us our trespasses, trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Against us. And, and do not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine the kingdom, the kingdom, 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 kingdom,
for the benediction, I want all of us to say the bold. Amen. Jesus said, peace be with you. As the Father sent me, so I am sending you. He believes in you. The busy world awaits your compassion. God, God believes, believes in, in us. us. Sometimes you will give your best, yet fail. God, God, God believes in us. In us. <laughs> At other times, you will succeed in spite of your stumbling. God believes in us. us. Go gladly, daring to succeed or fail to the glory of God. And then at the very end, nothing shall dismay you. God believes in us. With Christ, with Christ, 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 Christ within us, us, within us, we shall travel, we shall travel, well. travel well. The help of the saving Christ, the wisdom of the living God, and the support of the loving spirit will be with you every step of the way now and always. Amen. 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 Amen, everyone. Have a wonderful day. If you get a chance to go where uh, with Miss June, 